Hi and welcome to another episode of Second Date and this time it's a second date with BMW 7 Series. Second date because the only real change compared to the G12 7 Series I presented a while back is the drivetrain. This is a plug-in hybrid. You may have seen my BMW 330 review. If not, it will be linked somewhere in this video. But a 2.0-liter engine is nothing extraordinary in a 3 Series. However, it sounds a bit out of place in a 7 Series limo. To make things clear, this BMW is a 740 L E X Drive I performance. Now, this rather long name means an LWB AWD PHEV. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Anyway, the 2 liter motor under the bonnet here produces uh, 258 horsepower, and then there is an electric motor as well, which produces 113 horsepower, and altogether it gives us 327 horsepower, which is not a sum of these two amounts. So, what happened with the uh, 44 horses? Well, in hybrid drivetrains, you don't just simply add up the power outputs of uh, electric and petrol motors. Because power curves are not identical and the maximum power output occurs in different places. Hence, slightly less power than if it was just simply a sum. This plug-in hybrid can be charged from an electric socket and drive in zero emissions mode between 44 and 48 kilometers. BMW is not certain about that yet. The boot is about 100 liters smaller compared to a regular version because under the boot floor there are 9.2 kilowatt hour batteries. To put it into perspective, facelifted Nissan Leaf has 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, which gives it a claimed range of up to 250 kilometers, realistically around 200. I assume in optimum conditions BMW 740e will also do about 60-70% of the claimed electric range, but this is February and the thermometer outside is showing minus 5 degrees at the moment. Even with the car preconditioned, I managed to get only 19 kilometers out of it electric range. Like 330e, also 740e can be forced to drive in electric mode, otherwise it's best to drive it in Eco Pro, which allows you up to 2500 revs on electric power. I suppose if I were to drive like this all day and charge the car twice every 100 kilometers, I could get the claimed fuel consumption of around 2.5 liters per 100 kilometers, but charging this car every 100 kilometers will get you 8 to 9 liters per 100 kilometers. Charging from a regular 240 volt socket takes about four hours. So if your boss wants to be green, he better set up long meetings. Speaking of the boss, this is a long wheelbase version. So we've got 321 centimeter wheelbase instead of 307. And uh, this makes it a pretty comfy ride. By the way, this is not the top spec four-seater version. This is a five-seater actually. Of course I can slide the passenger seat forward but I don't have a footrest like in the four-seater version. See this thing folds and you can fit a fifth passenger here. Why would you? Passengers in the back get to play with a tablet which doubles functions of regular buttons. 18 months ago when this car was launched this may have seemed cool but when you think about it, functionality of this tablet is pretty limited. Okay, maybe you don't have to move to reach ambient lighting. Whoa. And you can play some games because, to be honest, it looks like an off-the-shelf Android tablet with a BMW app on it. And then there's the key, which is another proof that BMW wants to make something unique, but form precedes function. The key, or rather a remote control unit, is the size of, wait for it, Motorola StarTac 130. If you don't believe me, Google it. It's that big. In the world of smartphones, why would anyone need something as big as this? I mean, the best thing this fob can do is turn on your heating. You can precondition your car, but you know, you have to be relatively close to that, or you could use an app if there was an app for that, like in other cars, 
or you could just order your car with Webasto. Theoretically, you can use the remote control to park your car, but BMW is reluctant to specify press cars with this option. Anyway, Mercedes does it better and uses a mobile app rather than a remote control the size of an old mobile phone. Back behind the wheel and we get another pointless gadget – gesture control. Volkswagen offers similar thing these days and as far as I'm concerned, it's not really needed. Anyway, the best infotainment system today is in Porsche Panamera. Audi, BMW and Mercedes need to step up their game. But I don't want this to sound like I'm only criticizing BMW 7 Series, because there's not much to criticize, well, besides the last couple of minutes that I was criticizing just about everything. But anyway, this is a two-tone car, but from behind the wheel, it feels like I'm driving a 3 Series. Look, it's just brilliant, it's going like stink. It corners like it's on red. Okay, you can feel the extra weight, so X drive is not a bad idea. But still, it's a two tone car and it's 525 centimeters almost long. That's longer than some of the pickup trucks I recently tested. And it's supremely easy to maneuver, to corner, to, to live with thanks to the um, adaptive steering and 360 degree camera. I mean, that makes parking a breeze. 0 to 100 km per hour takes just 5.3 seconds, which is faster than 740i. And it's the same time as in case of the 740d. And these cars cost pretty much the same. So if you need a limousine to effortlessly and quietly drive around town from a meeting to meeting, then BMW 740e sounds like a good idea. But as long as you've got about 135 grand lying around, because this is what this test example costs. Starting price 101,000 euro in Germany. Or you can always lease it for about 1700 a month. Sounds like a bargain. Watch more of my reviews and subscribe to my channel. What do you think about a hybrid limousine? Drop me a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.